All right. In the previous uh, two parts of vectors, first we talked about definitions of vectors, how we represent a vector, and some specific types of vectors. Then we talked about vector addition as well as scalar vector multiplication. We talked about some of the properties of them and also the geometric representation of each of these uh, concepts. Now we are going to talk about transpose operator and inner product. This is part three of vectors. So the goal of uh, understanding transpose and the inner product first is to understand the definition of transpose operator. Second, explain the properties of the transpose operator. And finally, the definition of inner product and some examples of that. Right, so transpose properties and definition of inner product. All right, so vectors are usually represented as column vectors, but they also could be row vectors. So uh, a column vector is represented as x1, x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3 in a column. And then the transpose of this vector, x transpose is equal to x1, x2, x3, and xn. This one belongs to a still n dimensional space, but one multiplied by n. This one is real values, n multiplied by one, and x is x1, x2, x sub n. All right. So we can go from uh, one of these representations to the other by using the concept of transpose. And the dimensions of column vectors are n by one which means they have n rows and only one column. Two row vectors where they have n columns and only one row. All right, uh, let's uh, see some example. Vector x is one, four, zero. So what is x transpose? Vector x transpose is going to be one, four, zero, which is one by three in dimension. Vector x is three by one, which means it has three rows and one column. Another point that I would like to mention is if you find transpose of x transpose, so x transpose, transpose, what will happen? You are going to have one, four, zero, which is nothing but the original vector x. All right, the properties of a uh, transpose. Let's uh, consider x and y to be two vectors and alpha to be an scalar. So x and y are two vectors of the same dimension. and alpha is an scalar. The first property is what I just talked about. Transpose of, transpose of a vector is equal to the original vector. The second property is if we are summing, summing of vectors x and y, and we want to find the transpose, this is equal to summing of transpose of x and transpose of y. Next one, if we have x transpose multiplied by y, and we, find, we want to find the transpose, this is equivalent to y transpose x. And finally, if you are multiplying a scalar alpha to vector x and want to find the transpose, you can simply bring alpha out of the transpose. What's the reason? Because alpha is an scalar. So an scalar is like a vector with only one element. So alpha transpose is equal to alpha one transpose. This is one by one, which is equal to alpha one, which is equal to alpha. That is why here, 
we can simply bring alpha transpose. We can simply bring alpha out of the transpose. So we have alpha x transpose, alpha can come out of the transpose. All right, let's just see one example for uh, the latest scenario. Let's see, alpha is two and x is one minus two, zero. So what is alpha x? Is two multiplied by one minus two, zero. Two minus four, zero. Then what is alpha x transpose? Is two minus four, zero. On the other hand, what is alpha multiplied by x transpose? Let me find x transpose first. One minus two, zero. So alpha multiplied by x transpose is two multiplied by one minus two, zero, which is equal to two minus four, zero. As you can see, these two are the same. All right, uh, now we want to talk about the definition of inner product. The inner product, which is also called the dot product of two n-dimensional vectors x and y is given by x transpose y. So we assume that both vectors are n by one, which means they have n rows and one column. And this is defined as uh, the definition of inner product. How do we represent that? X dot Y or this symbol. So there are two representations for the inner product. We can use either of them alternatively. So example, let's define vector X to be minus one, two, two, and vector Y to be one, zero, minus three. So, What's going to be the inner product of x and y? It's x1, y1 plus x sub 2, y sub 2 plus x sub 3, y sub 3. Which means minus 1 multiplied by 1 plus 2 multiplied by 0 plus 2 multiplied by minus 3. Which is minus 1 plus 0 minus 6 or minus 7. So let me choose another color to say x1 multiplied by y sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 2, x sub 3, y sub 3. This is the definition of inner product. And how do we show that? x dot y or use this representation. These are alternative representation of the inner product. Next, uh, we are going to talk about norms and distance. So the goal of this part is focusing on a specific type of norm, which is called Euclidean norm, and also the distance between two vectors. So the goal here is first to understand the definition of Euclidean norm, then to understand some of the properties that the Euclidean norm has, and finally, to find the distance between two vectors. Definition of the Euclidean norm. The Euclidean norm of an n-dimensional vector is provided by, so the symbol is Euclidean norm, and then it's the square root of x1 square, x2 square to x1 square. Alternatively, we can show it by square root of x transpose multiplied by x, or, We can show this by square root of x, inner product x. The Euclidean norm is usually used to compute the length of the vector. So now let's take a look at an example. Vector x is equal to 3 minus 2, 1. What is the Euclidean norm of Vector x is square root of 3 square plus minus 2 square plus 1 square, square root of 9 or 1, square root of 14. 
As I said, alternatively, we can first find the inner product of X and itself, which is going to be three square minus two minus two, one, one, this is 14. And then say Euclidean normal vector X is the square root of the inner product. All right. So if a vector is one dimensional, this is basically like an scalar, right? It's, if vector X is one, then what will happen in this case? Euclidean norm of X is equal to a square root of X square, which is equal to X. This X one, the only element that this vector has. Let's take a look at some properties of uh, Euclidean norm. Assume that you have uh, the scalar value alpha and we have vectors X and Y where dimension of vector X is equal to dimension of vector Y is equal to X. The first property is homogeneity. Homogeneity tells us the Euclidean norm of alpha x, this is a scalar vector multiplication, is equal to absolute value of scalar alpha multiplied by Euclidean norm of x. Let me try to show why this is true. So Euclidean norm of alpha x is equal to alpha x1 squared plus alpha x2 squared plus alpha x sub n square, which is a square root of alpha a square x1 a square plus alpha a square x2 a square plus alpha a square x sub one x sub n a square. This is equal to alpha a square multiplied by x1 a square x2 a square x sub n a square. Now we can divide this into two parts. A square root of alpha a square and a square root of x1 a square to xn a square. This is going to be the absolute value of alpha multiplied by Euclidean norm of x. All right. Something that I just noticed, uh, then our vector in the previous slide, what I mentioned was when our vector, let's say A, only has one element, then the Euclidean norm of vector is going to be absolute value of its only element. So if our vector is, for example, minus one, the Euclidean norm is equal to one. If our vector is minus four, the Euclidean norm is equal to four. All right. Uh, the next property is triangle inequality. Euclidean norm of vector x plus y is less than or equal to Euclidean norm of vector x plus Euclidean norm of vector y. If I want to show this uh, using geometric representation, let's say this is vector x, this is vector y, this is vector x plus y. What it tells us, the lens of this vector plus the lens of this vector is more than the lens of their addition, their summation. All right, non-negativity, Euclidean norm of vector X is always greater than or equal to zero. So it's always non-negative. Definiteness, uh, Euclidean norm of vector x is zero if and only if vector x is zero. What does this mean? If you have zero vector, the Euclidean norm is equal to a scalar zero. If the Euclidean norm is equal to a scalar zero, then your vector, you can conclude that your vector is the zero vector.
So now we want to define the distance between two vectors. The distance between two n-dimensional vectors, such as vector x and y, is provided by and defined by distance of x and y equal to the Euclidean norm of y subtracted from x, or x1 minus y sub 1 square plus x sub 2 minus y sub 2 square plus x sub n minus y sub n square. So let's define two vectors. x is equal to 2 and minus 3. And vector y is equal to 0 and 1. So the distance, the Euclidean distance between vectors x and y is equal to the Euclidean norm of x minus y or the Euclidean norm of 2 minus 0 minus 3 minus 1, which is Euclidean norm of 2 and minus 4. Now we simply can find this. This is a square root of 2 a square plus minus 4 a square, which is a square root of 4 plus 16 or a square root of 2 n. This is the distance between these two uh, vectors. And this can be uh, this can be used in other other spaces as well. So if you want to find the distance between two points, let's say x is just one dimensional, right? So x is one and y is four. So the distance between these two points is simply uh, Euclidean distance, the distance between x and y is Euclidean distance of 1 minus 4, Euclidean norm of 1 minus 4, which is Euclidean of minus 3, which is equal to 3. So again, distance is always positive. It is important that distance is a scalar value, and it's not a vector. And also, it is always non-negative. All right, so in part three of vectors, we talked about transpose, inner product, norm, specifically Euclidean norm, and then distance. So transpose of a vector, so vector x transpose. How we defined it, if x was x1, x2, x sub n, then x transpose, this is an n one by one vector. x transpose was x1, the same elements, but in the row representation, one by n. Then the inner product of a vector was simply x transpose multiplied by x, or inner product of two vectors, x and y, was x transpose y. And how do we represent that? x dot y, or this uh, notation. Nor the Euclidean norm, how do we define it? Is sum of, is a square root of, sum of the square value of each element. And then we talked about distance. The distance between two vectors x and y is equal to the Euclidean norm of x minus y or the square root of x sub 1 minus sub y sub 1 square plus x sub 2 minus y sub 2 square plus x sub n minus y sub n square. This was the end of part three of Victor's.